Pleasant Wednesday afternoon, moms and dads, boys and girls. Welcome to another edition of Children's Bible Minutes brought to you by the Anglican Church. Rafi Muki and I are excited to be with you on this wonderful Wednesday afternoon. We hope that you've been having a good week so far and that things are going exactly the way you want them to according to God's will. Okay, so we have been looking at the Catechism and we know that in our Books of Common Prayer, the Catechism is on page 389. You can't see it, right? It's too bright in here with that light. But the evening sunshine keeps us uh, kind of in a bind. But we have been looking at the Catechism and we have looked at what the Catechism is why it is important and we looked at the first set of questions under under the catechism question one two to six which was all about human nature and we learned that by human nature we were created in the image and likeness of god but then that brings up the question so who is god exactly so today we're going to be looking at the second portion of the catechism which is entitled god the father mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and of course as with all things on this show everything is based on the bible so the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out a bible reading that we could listen to with regards to well who god is and you know what you know what our Bible reading for today comes from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And we are listening to this one from Meditate Word, which is the same people we listen to on Monday. So let's listen to what Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9 says. Here we go. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenants for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. And there you have it, as short as that was, it tells us that God, who God is in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. But you know that we have to look a little deeper into who God is. Now, on Monday, we looked at a portion of the catechism by a gentleman by the name of Father Timothy Matkin. And Father Timothy will read for us question number 7 through to 11 of God the Father from the catechism. Now, their catechism is slightly different than ours based on the page number in the book. But the issues in the catechism or the items in the catechism are the same because we are one family in the Anglican communion. So let's listen to what Father Timothy Matkin has to say about God the Father, question number 7 through to 11. Here we go. Hello, I'm Father Timothy Matkin. I'm the rector or parish priest at St. Francis Anglican Church in Dallas. You can look us up on the web at stfrancisdallas.org. And if you're in Dallas, I hope you'll come and join us. We're continuing our teaching series through the Catechism, Christianity 101. And we'll be looking at the section on God the Father. You can find the Catechism in the back of the 1979 Book of Common Prayer on page 845. I'll read the questions from the section God the Father and the answers, and then we will talk a little bit about them. Question one, what do we learn about God as creator from the revelation to Israel? We learn that there is one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. What does this mean? This means that the universe is good, that it is the work of a single loving God who creates, sustains, and directs it. What does this mean about our place in the universe? It means that the world belongs to its creator and that we are called to enjoy it and to care for it in accordance with God's purposes. What does this mean about human life? It means that we, all people are worthy of respect and honor because all are created in the image of God and all can respond to the love of God. And finally, how was this revelation handed down to us? This revelation was handed down to us through a community created by a covenant with God. As we continue our teaching series, I hope you'll keep in mind. 
that we want to thank Father Timothy Matkin for, for leading us in that section on God the Father. And again, on page 390 in our Books of Common Prayer, you could find that section that talks all about God the Father, which is what we will be discussing today. Now, to put that a little bit more simply, what do we learn about God as creator from the revelation of Israel? Well, we learned that there is only one God, the Father Almighty, and that he's the creator of heaven and earth. We said last time that he created us as well. But what does it mean that God is the creator of heaven and earth? It means that he created the universe, and so the universe is good. That there is a single God who loves us, who created us, and who sustains us in all things. But then you have to ask, well, what does that mean with regards to us? Here's what. Let's listen to our Bible story for today, which comes from Prepared to Answer. And this story from Prepared to Answer is all about who is God. Let's have a listen. Kids ask, who is God? The very first words of the Bible tell us who God is. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. This means that God is the creator of everything, which tells us a whole lot about who God is and who He isn't. All through history, people have gotten some wrong ideas about God. Even though He made us, over time people forgot who He really is and decided to make other things into God instead. Some looked up to the sun, moon, and stars, others to powerful or beautiful animals, and some even looked at other people and decided to call these things God, and they worshiped them. But none of these things can be God, because all of them are in the world, and nothing in the world can be God, since everything in the world was created by God. That's why, in one of the very first commands God gave to people, he said, You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. And that makes perfect sense, because if God is the creator of the heavens above, and the earth beneath, and the waters below, and everything else that is in them, then none of those things can be God. They are all His creations, and we should never confuse the Creator with the creation. Just think about it for a moment. Every painting has an artist, so we never think that the painting painted Ooh. itself. Every statue has a sculptor, so we never think that the sculpture sculpted itself. Likewise with God. He is the maker of everything which means nothing made by God can be God, including us. God isn't in the animals or the birds. He isn't in the rocks or the trees. He isn't in the stars or the planets, and he isn't in people either. God is the creator of them all, and therefore exists entirely on his own, apart from everything he has made. But what we really want to know is what this means to us. What does this mean? to you. Did you know that your life, who you are, and all that you are meant to be, was made by God? He made you and gave you your life as a precious gift. In fact, in the Bible, King David marveled at this fact, saying, For you, O God, created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully wonderfully made. This teaches you that God lovingly made you and is personally interested in everything about you. In fact, Jesus once said that God even knows how many hairs are on your head. Isn't it amazing to think that the God who created the universe is that interested in you and he wants you to know who he is? And the first thing he wants you to know about him is that he is your creator, and you were made by him. I 
I love that one. I love that one. And that's the thing. God the Father in our catechism is the person who is listed as the person that created us. We are his. All of the things in this universe, he made all of it. Sorry about my dogs. He made all of it. And he's a loving God who creates it, sustains it, and directs it. But what does that mean with regards to us? It means that we have to care for all the things and each other according to God's purposes. He knew why he made us. He knew how he made us. And we are supposed to live in such a way that respects and honors that. It means then that because we are all made by God, like we heard on Monday, all created in the image and likeness of God, it means that all persons are worthy of respect and honor. It means that because all are created in the image and likeness of God, we all have the love of God in us and could all respond to the love of God. You know what that means? It means that we have to love because God is love. It means we have to be kind because God is kindness and we are made in his image, created by him, for him and the glory of his kingdom. And you know what? How was this revelation handed down to us? As you would have seen it, handed down to us through the community created by a covenant with God. That's it. We are God's people and he is our God. That is who God the Father is. I hope that this makes sense for you now in terms of the second part of the catechism, who God the Father is. The next time we come together, well, we just heard that the revelation of who God is was handed down to us through a covenant. So next time on Friday, we will talk about what is a covenant. And we'll talk about the old covenant and how God revealed himself in it. But for now, sadly, we are out of time. Now, you know, before we go, we have to pray. So would you mind closing your eyes and bowing your heads? Okay, let's pray. Good afternoon, God. God, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence and to learn from your word. We just want to thank you, God, for the fact that we are made in your image and you created us. You are our creator. You are our provider. You are the Lord of the universe and you are deserving of our praise. And God, because you are the Lord of the universe and we are made in your image, then we are supposed to live with the type of love and with the type of kindness that you show to us. The mercy you show to us is the mercy that we should be able to show to others. God, we just thank you for loving us enough to make us, for loving us enough to sustain us, for loving us enough to teach us through the love of your son how to love each other. God, we don't always get it right. And when we don't, help us to remember to come to you to ask for forgiveness. Because through asking for forgiveness, you can restore us back to that place of love with you. God, we thank you for all that you give us in this life, for everything that you have created. And we pray that you help us to care for it in the same way that you would care for it yourself. We lift ourselves and our prayers unto you, God, through the name of your most precious son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, boys and girls, that is it for today's Children's Bible Minutes. The last thing we have for today is a song. And this one is done by Go Fish Kids. And this one is called My God is So Big and So Strong and So Mighty. I hope you do the actions, yes? I hope you do the actions. Listen, we have fun with you here on Children's Bible Minutes. Graffy Muki and I, we enjoy spending time with you. We hope that you are doing everything you can to keep yourself and your family safe. If you're going to leave the house, wear your mask, wash your hand, and watch your distance. Until Friday, same place, same time. God bless, and bye for now. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. So
Thank you.